Can you talk, Alex, about what has happened in Vanuatu? And for people who have never heard of this Pacific Island nation, talk about where it is. Okay, so Vanuatu is a um, country made up of um, eight, out of 80 islands, 65 of which are inhabited. It's in the Pacific, South Pacific Ocean. It's probably about three hours flying time directly east of the east coast of Australia. Um, so it's a very remote place. The capital, Port Villa, has a population of around 45 to 50,000 people. So, um, it's, and then it has um, the total population is about 260,000. Then spread out over those outer islands. Um, so, so yeah, it's 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 a it's a small country with spread out um, over a large space, um, and it has. Um, yeah, major sort of logistical um, issues at the best of times in terms of trying to get people and supplies out to those islands. So obviously, um, with this massive cyclone, um, those logistical challenges are, are massive now in terms of trying to organise getting the relief and supplies to the people outside of Port Villa. Um, in Port Villa, I mean, obviously, Port Villa has been badly affected. Communications are up to Port Villa, so we were able to see what is going on there. And we're seeing sort of 80 to 90 percent of buildings damaged. And in the sort of poorer shanty town areas of Port Villa, we're seeing massive destruction to, to homes. Um, and we're seeing significant damage to other infrastructure, such as roads um, being washed away by the high seas and bridges being destroyed by um, high rivers and as a result of flooding. Is this the worst climate catastrophe to ever hit Vanuatu? Um, certainly in living memory, there was a, a, a large cyclone in 1987 um, that did cause significant damage to Port Villa, but um, my understanding that this damage and this event um, far exceeds that. Um, Vanuatu is a very disaster-prone country. The UN has it at the top of the list in terms of the most uh, uh, the country that's prone to most natural disasters. Um, so in my time there, I was there for four years. I experienced um, many very large earthquakes, um, tsunami warnings, and a couple of cyclones, but nothing um, at this scale. And how has Vanuatu prepared for something like this? When you were Oxfam director in Vanuatu, you worked with them on disaster preparations. Sure. Yeah, so there's been a big investment in the past four years, so um, uh, at that by government um, and also by the um, non-government agencies as well. So we formed a group called the Vanuatu Humanitarian Team, which is a coordination body for those non-government agencies um, in order to improve the way that the country is able to plan for and respond to disasters. And there's certainly been a radical um, change and improvement in the country during that time. Um, and a lot of investment in that, that disaster management capacity at a national level. And also um, NGOs such as Oxfam um, and others have been working and supporting the disaster preparedness action at a community level as well. Um, and, and we are seeing the benefits of that now during this cyclone event, the speed in which the system kicked into action within you know, a matter of hours of the cyclone. Um, meetings were being held, plans were being made in terms of... Um, water and sanitation, food, um, logistics. Um, so, you know, there's, this is definitely, that investment in preparedness is definitely paying off now. Um, that said, this disaster is so massive, it's going to stress, stress the capacity of any, any system. And the international assistance that now is coming in is, is very needed um, and very welcomed by um, the Vanuatu government, it seems, and also the, the Vanuatu people. Um, and that assistance needs to continue um, in order to support um, the Vanuatu people with this recovery. On Sunday, the Australia announced a support package for Vanuatu, where you are now, Alex, in Australia. This is Australian Foreign Minister Julie Bishop. Today I can announce that Australia will be making an initial life-saving support package available to Vanuatu in response to a request from the government. This package will include $5 million that will be provided to Australian NGOs, particularly the Red Cross and to other United Nations partners. Uh, we will also be deploying humanitarian supplies to provide support 
for up to 5,000 people in the form of water, sanitation and shelter. That's Australian Foreign Minister Julie Bishop. Um, what are the figures you have now for casualties, um, for people displaced, Alex, uh, for the, what is it, 90 percent of all of the buildings have been flattened? Uh, I think 90 percent have been damaged in Port Villa. Um, um, not all of those have been flattened, so the, the buildings that had concrete structures um, are still standing, but, but most of those have had their roofs ripped off. Um, so I think still in terms of actually what I'm seeing in terms of formal figures for casualties, it, it's still sitting at eight, but that's people in central Port Villa. Um, I still think that, that the figures haven't flown through from elsewhere. Um, and obviously we're not yet getting the information from those outer islands where um, we can just imagine that the situation is, is going to be grave. There has been some now some initial, first initial assessments to Tanner Island, which is the, the major island in the south that was directly hit, um, and some, some aerial surveillance work there. And that is painting quite a grim picture in terms of the devastation to the housing and to the infrastructure and, and um, anecdotal reports of people saying that they're lacking, you know, um, food and, and health facilities and those sorts of things. So, so it, it seems that we're now beginning to get some access down to those areas and, and imagine that the um, figures in terms of casualties and sort of displaced will, will rise as we get um, a clearer picture there. Thank you.